reason she's facing defending champion Ronda Rasic in the quarterfinals is because Chilean Carla Munoz defeated Rasic in the pool play. So it goes to show you how the pool play can change the dynamics of a, a draw like this. So here we go, Vargas to serve. And starts with an ace. Both of these players incredibly athletic. A skip from the Argentine gives the American a point for 1-1. good serve from race that you saw how she served behind her back that's illegal as long as she's not in those two rectangles over on the left side and soft hands as well both Rasich and Vargas had uh, buys in the round 32s yesterday, so they played round 16 to get here today. Vargas defeated Maria Cruz Ortiz from Costa Rica, 15-2, 15-6. And Rasich defeated Jen Saunders from Canada, 15-6. And it's the American who started a little brighter. She's up 4-1. Vargas, her only point came from an ace serve to start the match. Some tough serving from Rasich so far. Yeah, really hit it, switching it up. You saw there she slid one to the right. Seems to have found her rhythm early, the American. Argentina, probably a wise timeout. Hasn't been in the service box very much. You can see she's having a conversation with her coaches over on the right side. That's one of the things that I really love about a tournament like this is that you get not only the team camaraderie, but you have coaches. And I think it's so valuable to have that extra pair of eyes outside of the court. They can just see so much more, help you identify what your opponent is not doing well or doing well. Um, you see a lot of players looking back at their coaches for what type of serve they should be serving. And it just really, to me, takes that competition up to a whole new level. Absolutely, and the other value as well is, is just having that second pair of eyes on decisions. Right. We have an appeal system here, and you'll, you'll see um, the officials can ask their line judges to make a decision as well. And sometimes the player doesn't see what happens, but the coach does, and the coach can encourage the player to appeal a decision. So again, it, it just adds some, some value to the player's ability to increase their chances of winning. But right now, it's all race at 6-1. This is a surprise. It is. Vargas came out really hungry. She jumped right out on the court. She's been doing really well all week. She took out one of the top champions um, in the round robin. She defeated Longoria in a stunning tiebreaker. So she's feeling it. Let's see what she does here with her. Vargas very much a power player and relies a lot on her athleticism and, and hitting the ball hard. We've already talked about this gearbox black ball being a little bit slower. And that may not be as advantageous for her as it is for Rasich, who's got a little bit more control and you could see had some soft touches in the front court. Second serve for Rasich. Kicks out on that glass. Over to the right side is the door which obviously has a different bounce because it's not sealed along the glass on the back wall. And so the bounce off the door is different to the rest of the back wall. So if you can hit that door, sometimes you'll have an awkward bounce, as we saw there.
point for Argentina, 2-6. Over on court number four, Salas, match point 10-7 against Cristina Amaya from Colombia. Quick side out for Rasek. Official is Eleni Guzman from Mexico. Officials are not allowed to officiate any match associated with a country they're either from or work in. Beautiful hitting from Rasic. The defending champion won it in an incredible tiebreaker last year against Longoria. That's on her YouTube channel. Such a good match to watch. It's full of controversy, too. Yep. One of the longest matches we've ever streamed. Well, you can hear Vargas. This isn't the start she wanted. It's like a drive serve to the back. But short again. She's struggling with that serve right now. the American skips one in. We're still at two serving A. Oh, it looked like Rasic stumbled there. She wants a replay. She's not going to get it. A point for Argentina. Looked like she just Got her legs caught up with Vargas. And you can see Laura, she points to the ceiling as if it's a justification, right? Karma, she gets the side out. It wasn't a great serve from Vargas. Yeah, I thought that was good, nice and smooth from Vargas. Little smile from Rasich, but she walks to the back of the court. Three serving eight. Vargas slowly working her way back into this match. Wow, that's a tough shot. You saw how Vargas ran around to hit it on her forehand. Kill shot. Another point, four serving eight. Next skip, it'll be a side out. An update on our tiebreaker, Salas advances to the semifinals over Cristina Amaya. serving four. Vargas needs to play clean. Too many skips right now. And it's easy for the American. We saw the return. Wasn't great. Punished by the American. Ten serving four. Remember we played a 15. Win by one. If it's one game each, we go to a tiebreaker, first to 11. 
Not sure what the discussion is. Last time these two met. In fact, I believe it's the only time these two have met in international competition was the Pan Am Games in 2011. That was some time ago. Was Rasich the victor there? Both. Of course, they've played each other a lot professionally on the professional tour, and it's almost all square between the two. So this could go either way, and I expect to see some back and forth through this match. Four serving ten. Nice flick of the wrist from Vargas. So an updated score is 6-12. We're having a little trouble with the scoreboard here at the facility. Oh, I thought that might have been good. Very close. from Rasic. She wanted it, she didn't get it, but again, it shows the, hi it highlights the athleticism of Vargas to stay in that rally. Puts pressure on your opponent to do a little bit more than you're used to just because she's getting balls back that you don't expect to see coming back. Oh, wow. Oh, that ball rolls it out from Vargas. 8-12. Terrific hands from the American to stay in the point. But it looks like Vargas has just settled down. Maybe started a little too pumped up. Seems to have really found her rhythm now. Back and forth we go. It's the American who strikes first. It's like we have a, I'm not sure what the discussion is here. Looks like there will be a timeout on the court. No? Yes? Yes. Timeout on the court. Vargas will stay warm out there. Rasich takes a seat. Coming up after this, we'll start with the men's singles competition featuring Carlos Keller from Bolivia. He'll be taking on Michael Moye from Moyet. Cuba. Moyet. Whatever you say, I'll say the opposite, okay, Tim? <laughs> that's the game we're going to play today. <laughs> Carlos Keller and Michael Moyet from Cuba. And David Horn and Pedro Castro will be rounding out our singles competition. And a lot of people are looking forward to seeing Moyet play. He's very exciting. We streamed some of his matches earlier in the week. He goes for everything from every angle, from every position. And he's so much fun to watch, and I think... I think Carlos Keller is going to have his hands full. Keller would obviously be the favorite, having been on the international scene for so long. But don't count out Moyet. He's a lot of fun to watch. Moyet is actually seated number four, and Keller at number five based on those round robin group seatings from previous. So, yeah, I think we're in for a great show. Yeah, Moyet uh, defeated uh, Ugade from Ecuador, and right. also I believe Thomas Carter from the U.S. in his pool and won his group which is why he got a nice seed going into the elimination bracket. Twelve serving eight. I like the serve from Race. It slides it down the right side. Good D from Vargas. Oh. Not that time. Clean hitting from the American. Point for Rasich, 13-8. Wow, 
how you saw you saw Rhonda's face as it went back. Like, why did I do that? <laughs> and she was punished for it. Side out. The American two points away from this first game. Vargas not going down without a fight. This pump dies on the back glass. A point for Argentina. <laughs> and again, 10 serving 13. All power from the Argentine. Lines up for that drive serve. She likes to go to the backhand. That will be a screen serve. The ball passed too close to the body of Vargas. Inhibits the vision of the returner. So that will be a fault serve, second serve. Shot, game point number one, 14-10. Grace Hitch sticking with that serve down behind her, sliding in one to the right, as you saw there. Almost, second serve, a little bit short. It is. Oh my goodness. Vargas skipped it. All she had to do was hit the front wall. <laughs> but Make it sound so easy, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> it seems so. <laughs> it seems so, but she went for too much. The American Rasic takes the first game 15 10. Players are ready to kick off game two. Rasic will serve. Start for the American on the board first. Over on court four, Mendez from Argentina and Martinez from Guatemala just started. That's the other quarterfinal in this bracket. We'll keep you updated with scores from that one. Another quick point for the American. She's playing well this morning. Very few errors. Vargas, meanwhile, hitting with power, but also making some mistakes, as you saw on that game point. The game of American 15 10, first game. Little flick of the wrist from Vargas. They're called skip. Three serving zero. Soft hands that time from the Argentine. Gets her a side out. Let's see if she sticks with this serve. She's consistently been serving to the left. But a lot of them have been coming off the back wall. That time, great hustle from the Argentine. Might have been good. Short called. You could see Vargas. She doesn't like the call. I loved. And a skip. Well, I'm not sure what 
discussion is here. Nope, didn't catch it. Research looking for something, huh? Having a discussion with Eleni Guzman from Mexico, who is our head official for this match. Appreciate all of the officials spending so much time and effort not only officiating, but improving their skills. We've had meetings this week with officials working on rules and making sure there's consistency across these officials. Four serving one. Looking a little similar to game one right now. Slow start for Vargas. Yeah, and it's all about the serve return from Vargas. Rasich is serving to her left and then sliding in one to the right. Unlucky that time. The ball kicked out off the back glass. I should say lucky. She yeah, she got a point off that one. Can't believe she actually made it. Timeout Argentina, probably wise, Laura, given that Vargas is down 1-6 and lost the first 15-10. Yeah, slow start for Vargas. We'll see if she can pick things up with this timeout. Statistically, right, Tim, players uh, that call the timeout usually get it going in their favor, so she's looking for a side out when we return. Coming up after this, Carlos Keller and Michael Moyet Very from good. Cuba. It'll be Bolivia and Cuba. And then our second men's singles quarterfinal features David Horn from USA and Pedro Castro from Canada. And then later this afternoon, we'll be jumping into the doubles. If you guys want the full schedule, go to internationalracquetball.com. Indeed, click on events and live events. You'll see the draws. And we also have juniors here. We have a challenger division of... 35, 45, and 55 going well into the evening competing. It's been a lot of fun. Again, Laura, this is classic racquetball. Good serve, poor return, finish the point. It's exactly what you want as a player. Gain an advantage from your serve and finish the point. And Rasich is, is playing textbook racquetball right now. She's making very few errors races. But that time, terrific return from Vargas, really attacking it. Yeah, great example of the power that you've been talking about that she possesses. Oh, oh what hands from Vargas, down on her knees. Watch this serve, it does seem to pop up off the back wall. She needs to get that serve just a little lower. She wants two bounces before that back wall. Crossing the short line first, of course. Second, first objective. Second serve coming up. Slows it down. A little bit of off speed there from Vargas. Gets her another point. Puts her at 3-7. Starting to pick up that momentum. Even though she didn't win the rally in that, in that timeout, she start, she's starting to pick things up here for herself. Again, look how far that ball came off the back wall. It, it's, it's almost expected. You know, Ronda Rasich is looking to the left, waiting for that ball to come off the back wall and allowing her to attack it, getting her into the service box. I'd like to see Vargas just try something different. It, it's, it's not working the way she's, she wants it. If it was, she would be down heavy in game two, 8-3. We have some blood on the elbow of Rasich, so we will have an injury timeout while she gets that cleaned up. 
see Vargas staying in the court, working on her backhand. Oh. So, sorry, so not to interrupt you, but Vargas, yeah, looks like she's kind of working on that, working out her different serves. Just a reminder for everyone watching at home, this is just the beginning of our streaming. Today is the quarterfinals. We'll be streaming all day. Women's singles, men's singles, women's doubles, and men's doubles. Join us tomorrow on Friday for the semifinals and on Saturday for the finals to find out who will be going home with gold. You can get the schedule. We'll be posting it every day on the IRF Facebook and also on the homepage of internationalracquetball.com. And right now, there is no room to watch over on court number four between Natalia Mendez from Argentina and Ana Gabriela Martinez from Guatemala. It's in game one. Martinez leads 7-5. Yeah, it's been an outstanding experience so far here in Temuco, Chile. They did a really great job of getting all the courts ready. I mean, just look at how white and bright um, the courts are here on our show court. You can see our referee just checking the floor for any wet spots, doing a great job. And these courts aren't finished, which means that when players sweat and dive on the courts, we don't really have needs for towel timeouts and, you know, dragging the match on and on and on in order to clean the courts. And that's made it really helpful not only for officials but also for players and and allowing us to get through the matches on time rather than every other point oh i need a a, a timeout so that has been a great feature of these courts in particular and we've seen them in other locations cali colombia for example where we'll be for the world championships also has those courts as well and it just eliminates some of the unnecessary slowness of a match right keeps things moving for us and for those of you watching, which I'm sure you appreciate at home. If you are watching right now, hit those share and like buttons and tell everyone that you're watching the International Racquetball Federation. This is the Pan American Racquetball Championship in Temuco, Chile. And it's the first of many tournaments that the IRF is involved in. There's also the South American Games this year the Central American and Caribbean games. Both of those are multi-sport events, so racquetball is just a sport in those events. Then we have the World Championships coming up in August. Senior World Championships, which will be in Mexico the end of August, beginning of September. And then we round out the year with the Junior World Championships. And those San Luis Potosí, Mexico. That is one of my all-time favorite events. Love seeing the kids, the families all coming out and playing in that team environment. Just really fun. So Rasic was bleeding on her elbow a little bit. Looks like she got that wrapped up and they're ready to resume play. It is 9-3 in game two. I'm not sure what Vargas is complaining about. She doesn't look happy though. Nope. Here we go. Well, look where Vargas is hitting, all back to the middle, allowing the American to control the point. Ten, serving three. That time a solid return from Vargas. She looks back there to her coach, Carlos Quadri from Argentina. Giving her some advice on the serve. She switches it up to a forehand. But again, look who's controlling the point. Vargas having to play defense consistently. You saw Guadri, he's over there on the right. A little nod of his head of encouragement. Over to the left, head coach Dave Ellis. Skip from the Argentinian. Puts USA up 11-3. Or these matches just go to show you that the round robin isn't the end of it. You may lose a match, Ronda did, against Carla Munoz. Maria Jose Vargas didn't. 
and even beat Paola Longoria, as we mentioned. And yet here they are. It's 12 serving three, game two. Whole new ball game. Terrific effort from the American. Not quite there. Let's see if Vargas changes her serve. Doesn't look like it. She does. And just an easy pinch skip. It was right there and she just didn't put it away. Tell she seems a little frustrated. Second serve. I mentioned earlier the, the floors and how they're slightly uneven and it can create some different bounces. And you see that on a lob serve. That lob serve cut inside when it hit the floor and it just hit one of those little rivets on the floor and created an unusual bounce. Keep an eye on those as we go through the tournament, especially from those great angles on the left and right. And you'll see the ball doesn't always bounce straight as it's intended. Thirteen three. Rasic leading by a game. She won game one 15-10. She's now two points away from closing out this match. We saw this in the first match. Longoria Sabja very close in game one and Longoria run away with it in game two. Vargas though, she's still fighting. Side out. Three thirteen. She needs to focus on the next point. Really struggled with that serve today. Point for Vargas, 4-13. Wow, switching to a lob serve. And earning a point for it. Yeah, she sent that one deeper into the corner. Looks like she's going to stick with it. Beautiful from Rasic. Saw Vargas pushing forward to the right. Cut it to the left. Side out two points away from this match and a place in the semifinals. Five match point for Rasich. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> what That's a way to one end. way to end it. That feels good. Rasich ending on an ace, 15 5, which means she takes the match. She'll be moving on to the semifinals tomorrow, and she continues defending her gold medal from 2017. And I'm a little bit surprised by Vargas. You know, I expected a little bit more from her. She struggled with her serve. Lots of short serves and then lots of long serves coming off, off, uh, off the back wall. And compared that to Rasic, who seemed to control her serves a little bit more, putting some down the left, some down the right, keeping Vargas on her toes. And ultimately, if you look at the skip count, it favored Rasic by a wide margin. And so that's the difference between these two players. We saw the same in match number one between Longoria and Sabja. Very close game one, not so much in game two. And so it shows you how maybe you win game one and you relax a little bit and take, take your shots a little bit more with more confidence. Conversely, the player who loses game one, I need to do something different. I need to force the issue and maybe you make a few more errors. Suddenly you have a very different scoreline. 
Well, we'll be back with more of our streaming from the Panamericanos in Temuco, Chile with the men's singles, starting with Carlos Keller from Bolivia and Michael Molet from Cuba.